Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel and in this video we will continue with our discussion <coughs> on SD-WAN. We will specifically be talking about uh, service chaining, right? Uh, that being said, do check out my previous video because there will be a lot of configuration which will be retained from there. So do check it out. Um, that being said, let's start with uh, what is service chaining, right? So service chaining is pretty simple. I mean, um, uh, if you see this topology, I have changed it a little by adding a small firewall over here. Right, so what we are trying to do here is in service chaining, we kind of build policies wherein a particular service which is available at one particular site can be made available for the rest of the sites, right? So in this case, we are demonstrating using firewall. So we'll be basically telling that all the other sites, you know, they can leverage this particular um, you know, firewall which is present at branch 3, right, the branch, the site number 103, right, so we are basically telling, you know, anyone wants to use it can use this, right, and we'll be doing that by obviously putting in some policies and uh, doing some configuration, right, so that being said, let's actually jump into it, right, so let me just pull this up one second. second yep that's good so back here um, yeah so I just put in a quick diagram just to uh, explain what we have done right till now in our previous videos right we have uh, set up the whole internet uh, transport you have set up the MPLS transport and we have made everything operational which means all the nodes are able to talk to each other and in this particular video we will actually be using one specific VLAN which we have already set up in the previous videos Right, we'll be using the VLAN 10, which we have set up. Don't confuse yourself with VLAN and VPN. VPN is basically the transport side, uh, you know, VPN, uh, sorry, the service side. We are basically using the VPN 10. Um, VPN 0 is obviously on the transport side, right? Um, so VLAN is different from VPN, right? So this particular VLAN is something which uh, this particular subnet is what we have defined in, you know, VLAN 10, which is obviously part of VPN 10. Um, you know on each of the sites right you can see the IP address ranges which I have defined here okay so that being said all right so let's look at the um, configuration um, so what I want to show you is the configuration of the ASA some default configuration which I have put in place so that I'm just showing this so that you can replicate the whole stuff right uh, on your lab as well so let's just try to uh, I think it's disconnect let me disconnect and reconnect again yep there you go so what do we have if you look at show interface uh, IP brief you will see that I have basically put in the IP address on one of the interface which is gigabit 0 slash 0 right which is the interface here which is connecting up to the switch switch 2 which is behind BR3 uh, and then we also have like um, um, let me also show you show name if interface I believe I think show name if should do it yeah so my interface is basically called as corporate corp right uh, it's basically we are telling that you know all the traffic on this is from the corporate uh, it's mainly for the side to side right so uh, we also have put in one access list um, it's just namesake right because um, anything which goes inside uh, the um, uh, firewall you need to define it using access list so I put in an access list here let me show you the access group so this is the access group right which has been defined on that particular interface corp right which is the um, this particular interface right gigabit 0 slash 0 and uh, the access list as such is nothing but I think uh, if I do something like show access list should give you uh, this let me just take out maybe this should also work yeah there you go right so I have put in like permit IP any any on this particular access list right so basically saying any traffic which is coming in you know you're basically permitting it because right now I'm not interested in uh, this is this is where you will obviously change in your actual production environment this is where you define your rules you say what is allowed what is not allowed since it's a lab I have just put in everything as permit for now right uh, Cool, then what else? Um, give me a second. Uh, now let me also show you the default route, right? So show uh, run route. So I have put in a default route on that interface towards 172.17.30.1, right? 
Now the interesting thing is you might uh, ask what is this IP address? We have not used this IP address before. 172.17.30, right? 30 we have never used. So this is a new subnet which I have created. So how the design would change is, I mean, till now we were having these subnets, right? The ones which I have highlighted, we have 172, 17, 1.0, 0, 2.0, 3.0. Now, this particular service which is there, um, it's, it's always better to separate your users and the service. So that's why what we'll do is, we will keep this um, subnet which is already here intact as is. Let's not change that, rather let's create another VLAN, right, VLAN 30, right, we'll call it as VLAN 30. And that will be in uh, the IP subnet, which is 172.17.30.0 uh, slash 24, right? This also would be obviously in, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm collecting green because uh, at the end of the day, both of these are going to go in your v VPN 10, right? So though it is VLAN 10 here, VLAN 30, both of them would be serving, uh, you know, going under the VPN 10, right? So. Uh, but the reason why I'm doing this is I want to keep it very clean, right? Wherein the users, I'm going to put it in VLAN 10, whereas the services, I'm going to put it in VLAN 30. Now, that being said, uh, if you uh, go back and look at my topology here, or if you look at my uh, default route here, 172.17.30.1, right? We haven't yet defined this. So that will be our first task. So the first task is we will basically go down to our uh, BR3 over here and we'll define uh, uh, interface over here, right? Currently, it has just the 172, 17, 13, 3.0 subnet defined, but we will go and define our subnet which we need now on my, um, um, you know, obviously on the vManage, right? So let's get started, right? So the first step would be obviously uh, let's start with um, going down to uh, where do we go? Templates, right? Let's go down to templates. Sorry, here. So under templates, let's go to the features. Now what we'll do is here, um, let's go and uh, find if we have the um, VLAN 10, right, which we had defined before. We have VLAN 10, probably, mm, let's see, do we have Okay, so I believe uh, we probably defined it slightly differently, right? So let's try to see where we can find that. All right, so I think I have found it here. So this is the uh, one which we had defined. So let's go and kind of like um, um, copy this, right? This one, so that we can create a duplicate, right? So let's copy this. Uh, this was the specific one, if I'm not wrong, right? So, um, <clears throat> what do we do here? So, we, let's go and call this as um, VLAN 2.10. Let's change this to 2.30, right? Because that's what we want. And let's copy. So, now we should have uh, something like 30 getting created. Let's go find it here. Here you have. Let's edit it. Right, so we have the VPN interface. Uh, now let's go and you know put in some stuff, which is nothing but uh, uh, the first thing is we'll have to change the interface name here, obviously from 10 to 30. You understand why we are doing this, right? We are we are basically introducing another VLAN, which is VLAN 30, right? We just had VLAN 10. Now we are introducing VLAN 30 because we want to keep our services separate from the users. Change this also to uh, from 10 to 30. Right. That being said, what else? What else do we need to do? So let's scroll down. Let's see. Uh, okay, there is a IP address here. So obviously we'll have to change the name of this from uh, 10 to 30. Let's change this to make it more intuitive. So that is done. Is there anything else? Let's scroll down. Do we have some kind of ACLs and stuff? I don't see anything as of now. Let's check here. Okay, we have some kind of an ACL. Let's wipe it off. I don't want the ACL, so let's go to default and let's turn it off, everything. So ACLs, ingressor, all of that I'm turning it off. Probably I had enabled it in the previous videos. So that's good. What else? Let's go to my uh, uh, IPMTU. So let's remove this, right? So 
uh, uh, let's keep it there. We want because of the sub interface, right? So uh, 1496, let's keep it. I think that's it. I think we can go and update now. So what we have done, we have created that VLAN 30, right? A new VLAN. Uh, now we need to go and obviously attach it to the device. So let's go and find the device. We are basically working with the BR3 device today, right? So let's check where do we find the BR3 device. Looks like it is around here, right? So let's go and edit this. It's going to go for BR2 as well, but that's fine. And uh, so when we come down here, uh, let's go and uh, we'll, you see there's an option for service VPN over here. So we'll go to service VPN. Uh, we already have the VPN 10 and under that VPN 10 we have the VLAN 10 over here, right? So uh, in the previous videos we actually had created more VPNs, right? We had created VPN 11 and so on. Uh, but anyway, so we are still sticking to VPN 10 and let's go and add our VPN interface. But this time we will basically be adding what? Uh, yeah, do, are we doing everything right? Yeah. So let's go and uh, select this and uh, basically select the latest uh, VPN which I created. I mean the VLAN which I created, right? There you go. So once I save that, uh, let's update this. So it's obviously going to ask me to put in the IP address, right? Uh, which is going to be the address which I put in earlier, right? So I should have put in it as default because it's going for both of these guys. Mm, that's interesting. So uh, t -t 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 -t. that's okay. Let me put in some dummy value. It doesn't matter. So for BR3, that's just something which is of uh, importance for me. So let's go and change this to 172.17.30.1. Right, makes sense. So let's just copy this uh, for now. And okay, so this is updated. Whereas for this guy, for BR2, I'm not actually interested. I can, I, I'm just putting in some dummy value, uh, you know, not something really uh, um, uh, useful, right? So I'm just going to put in something like uh, uh, 40.1, something like this, right? I'm not going to be using it. It's just that both of the templates were kind of like. Um, you know, using uh, both of the devices were using the same template, so I had to put in some value. Maybe I should have made it as optional. Anyway, so now we are pushing it. While that gets pushed, uh, once this gets pushed, we should be able to go and check uh, on our firewall that we should be able to ping the default gateway which we just now created, right? So what we did was we basically went and did this. We we basically, uh, uh, or maybe from this diagram, it would be more better. So this gigabit zero slash two, which you see here, right? Uh, on this, we basically created um, uh, another VLAN, right? Basically creating a VLAN is nothing but creating one more sub interface, right? So because this interface is anyway trunked from the from the uh, edge to the switch. So we just had to create uh, a sub interface over here. Um, and uh, uh, basically that's what we did, right? So uh, we introduced uh, the VLAN 30, right? So for this particular firewall, we'll now be directing all the traffic or the default gateway would be nothing but the VLAN 30. So that's what we did. So we basically this interface over here is gonna be now 172.17.3.1 slash 24. I think that's what we put in. Sorry, 30.1, my bad. 30.1 slash 24. Anyway, so let's check if that worked, right? So looks like it has been pushed. If I go down to my firewall, which is this one over here, let's check if I can ping my uh, 172.17.30.1. Uh, uh, yeah, see, it is reachable. Right, so I'm able to ping from where? From the firewall to the BR3. Right? Um, do I, can I even also ping outside? Let me just check that. Um, so, do I have internet connectivity on this firewall? Four dot say two dot two dot two. Not sure if that would work. Yeah, okay, we have internet connectivity. Cool, that is perfect. Yeah, so everything looks good. Uh, give me a second. All right, so we are back. 
we are done with the step number one wherein we um, uh, we basically created the VLAN and we uh, were able to talk between or we were able to connect from our ASA to uh, BR3 right <coughs> okay so the next step is basically um, we have to create uh, the new VPN 10 uh, right so give me a second my yeah sorry my pen was misbehaving anyway so uh, uh, coming back to this um, um, now what we'll do is next we will create a new VPN I mean I know that we already have the VPN 10 behind each, each of these edges which we have used in the past but I want to create a new VPN here right uh, behind uh, BR3 because now uh, this particular uh, new VPN will you know include this VLAN which we created just now right and we obviously haven't created this VLAN on all the other edges right so we want to create a very customized VPN only for this particular edge and that is going to be our objective right so let's go back here looks like it logged me out All right, so we are here. So what we'll do is we will go down to our, uh, uh, you know, templates, right? Let's go and search for the existing uh, template for VPN 10. Let's find that we have it. Yep, see, you see all the six devices are using this. Now I don't want to do any changes here because if I do this, then all the six devices will get impacted. So I'll do, I'll take the high road and I'll basically create uh, you know let's go and copy this and let's say you know this is going to be uh, basically the VPN 10 but for uh, say um, firewall right I'll just mention it as firewall so that's easier to dis differentiate right so that being said now this is going to get created let's go and edit this guy So where do we go? The first, I mean, the only thing which we'll have to probably do is um, um, the rest of the stuff is going to remain same, right? We're going to obviously have it in VPN 10 and stuff. It's just that we need to include this service, right? So we go down to the service. What is the service? Uh, the service which we are going to use now is the firewall service, right? So let's select that. Let's create a new service, right? Select firewall here, right? IP address. Um, of uh, the firewall is going to be 172.17.30.4 right that's the IP address on my ASA which I showed you earlier let's add this guy and that should be it actually that should be it let's update this don't have to do anything else let's go back to the device on the device obviously which is our device now it's this uh, 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 the BR3 obviously BR2 BR3 again it's probably going to go for both the devices but I think that should be fine yeah that should be fine um, let me think should we create a separate all right so uh, to make it uh, simpler what I did was I ended up uh, splitting this dual transport uh, template which was there earlier right it was just one template I broke it into two um, uh, and I kind of wanted to separate the BR2 from BR3 right because I did not want whatever we are doing is we are doing on BR3 I did not want those changes to go down to BR2 right so I kind of split that template and you can see now every single device has its own template right so which we the one which will be operating is the BR3 template so let's go and edit this Right, so if you go back to the service VPN, you can see this is what we added earlier, right? The um, the uh, VLAN 30, right? The sub interface is present here, but uh, what are we supposed to add now? Um, <coughs> is that we are supposed to change this particular VPN to the new VPN which we just now created, right? This is what we were using, the VH VPN 20, but we want to change it to this one. Let's update this. Right, so that looks good. Do we have to put in anything here? 
yep everything is there so that's good click on next you can see the change if you want let's see here should have something in green getting added yeah over here you can see the service uh, uh, firewall address right has been added now right Hit on configure. It's happening here. Let's wait for a second. All right, looks like it is completed. Now we can quickly verify. Let's jump onto the box and go to BR3, I guess. It's here. We have to reconnect maybe. Yep, here. I'm on the device now. And if I do something like show OMP service, right? You will start seeing stuff. You can see this is what we added just now, right? The firewall service route you can see here, right? Remember during the initial, um, you know, overview sections, I was talking about three types of routes, the OMP routes, the T-lock routes and the service routes. We have already looked at OMP and T-lock and this is the third one, third and the final route, which is the uh, service side routes. And that's what you see here. Right. Now, what I want to also highlight here is the label, right? Just look at the label here. The label is 1006. Just make a note of this right in your mind because later we will basically be using that. Now the next is we have to, so what, what we have done till now at this point is that we have uh, created a new subnet for our service, right? We created a new subnet and then we advertised that subnet, um, you know, or we added that subnet to the VPN 10 and as uh, you know, by default, uh, anything you add to VPN 10, right? Because it is the, like the, service side uh, VPN, right? Those routes are getting advertised to the v, uh, vSmart and vSmart is then advertising it to the rest of the guys. So let's go and check if that is happening. So we can go to monitor network, sorry. We clicked on something else. Let's go to network. On network, let's click on vSmart. And if we see, uh, go to real time here. And on real time, if I do something like OMP services, right? See here, we should see that 1006 right over here. See, you see the firewall routes, you know, are appearing on the vSmart, right? So vSmart is basically getting the service routes, right? Now, the next step is we need to basically create a policy on vSmart, right? So that vSmart knows what to do with these routes. Right, so we have to create a policy. Right, so what is happening as of now is that these nice routes, right, which are here. Hope my pen works. Yeah, so the vSmart is over here, right. So the routes, um, uh, in fact, the service routes, which we uh, this particular routes, right, one seventy two seventeen thirty So they are basically. Uh, let me use a in color probably. Yeah. So they are basically uh, going down, you know, from from the edge till the vSmart, right? And now what we have to do is we have to basically tag these routes with the OMP routes, right? So we have to create a policy. And what will this policy do? This policy will tag the OMP routes for what? For the VPN 10, right? So all routes for all VPN 10 routes, o VPN 10 OMP routes, right what we are going to do is we are going to tag all those routes with this particular label which you saw earlier right so with respect to um, um, you know with respect to the firewall service just remember the label for now which is 1006 that's why i said just keep a keep a note of this label right so what we are basically going to do is we are going to you know uh, tell vsmart to tag all the omp routes for vlan 10 with this particular um, you know service uh, label Right, you'll understand why we are doing that, but I'll show you right now how to do it, and as we progress, you'll understand why we did that. Right, so um, 
before doing anything let me probably go down to say r1 and uh, because it's on the headquarters side right so on r1 i want to show you like how it appears before doing this policy right what is the state of the device before doing anything right so if i do something like show ip route uh, vpn say 10 and omp Give me a second well, this is this is what you see um, uh, before we go and configure any kind of policies right you can see these are normal you know vpn 10 routes omp routes and you can see the corresponding t lock you know which is straightforward which we have done in all the 15 16 videos we have done uh, so this is the initial state before we configure any policies right which is pretty cool so now what i'll do is uh, just get this off okay give me a second yeah so now what we are doing is that we are basically going to configure a policy right so we are going to configure a central control policy to do what why are we doing this policy the reason is because now as of now what we have achieved we have made sure that the service routes which are there here when i say service routes it's basically the firewall routes or from this diagram you know basically the firewall route which is here we have made sure that firewall route has somehow reached the vsmart right so it has reached the vsmart but now we have to put in a policy to tell vsmart what to do with these routes right so we, that's what we are basically going to do now so um, all that thing which i explained about tagging you know the omp routes with this um, particular uh, uh, tag associated with the service right that's basically what is going to happen right so let me show you let me take you through that and you will understand it more better right so let's go to our favorite place which is the policies uh, probably let's create a list for sites maybe i already have it from my previous yeah i already have it so you see i have created a uh, site called site sites which need the firewall which is 1 101 and 102 right note here i have not used 103 right i will tell you why i have not used 103 so currently the sites which need firewall or the traffic um, you know which has to go through the firewall is basically for sites 1 101 and 102 right so that's cool next let's go to the topology and uh, do we have something here probably i've deleted the previous one good let's go and uh, create a new custom control topology let's give the name here as i don't know something like uh, topo underscore service underscore firewall and in which direction i was showing you earlier i want this particular policy to be applied on the vsmart in the outbound direction right and uh, let's go and create a sequence type it's going to be route let's add a sequence rule the we're going to match based on the vpn list we are basically telling you know uh, apply this particular uh, uh, service chaining policy for vpn 10 and the actions is going to be obviously accept let's uh, select the service which we want you know which we want to define here uh, or which we want the vsmart to tag so vsmart is now when it is reflecting back the omp routes it is going to tag those omp routes with the service which is firewall right and uh, in which vpn do we have this service it is in vpn 10 we can have a different vpn as well to keep it simple i have used the same vpn that is our service and the and uh, you know uh, the traffic which has to be filtered is both of it is in vpn 10 that being said we are good there let's save this let's uh, also check the default condition it has to be accept right let's save that now we can save the policy cool i'm happy with that moving forward uh, so we have this which is cool and uh, we have a next button somewhere here at the bottom probably not give me a second yeah so instead of uh, using the existing policy let me go and create a new policy this time right in the earlier videos you would have seen me piggybacking right so this time let me create a new policy so under the centralized uh, policy uh, what i'll do is i'll basically create add policy right let's click on next 
So here let me go and do an import of existing policy which is a custom one right what's the one which we just now created it is this one topo service right so we are going to import that so once you import it it appears here i think we are good to go and click on next right so uh, wait did i do something let me go back once just see did i miss out something So we have uh, we have imported the topology, uh, which is fine. Cool. We have imported it. That's good. Okay. So let's click on next, and next, and we'll have to give a name for this guy. We'll have to give something like uh, again. Let's call it as topo underscore service. This will be the name of the centralized topology, uh, the policy, right? So we'll have to give the name. Once done, um, we will have to now define here the site list, right? So we'll have to say what is the inbound site and what is the outbound site. Now I am going to just define the outbound site because, like I said, I want the uh, particular service chaining to be done for site number one, one hundred one, and one hundred two. I'll tell you why we are not doing for one hundred three later, right? So that's why I'm selecting the outbound site list. I'm selecting the list of sites which we had earlier. Cool. Let's add this. There you go. This appears. We can save this. Right. So once done, what do we do? Let's go and activate it. You can see here it's getting a it's a centralized uh, control policy. That's why it's getting applied on the vSmart. So remember, we earlier saw. Uh, the output of R1. Now let's go back and check what is the output of R1. So this one. Just going to hit the button. Let's see the difference. Can you spot the difference? It's very evident, right? You can see all the T logs which were there here. They have changed. You had T log of you know BR1-1, BR1-2. Um, you know this was uh, okay. This was 1-1, I believe, and this was 1- sorry, this was 1-1. This was 1-2. This is BR two, so all of those various T logs which you have, all of them got changed to BR three. See here, V Smart. What it did was, it uh, uh, you know intelligently changed the T log or the next stop. T log is basically nothing but next stop. So it changed the next stop of all the routes to BR three, and you can see that over here. Awesome. So that's that's the first thing which you need to note. Second thing, what do we do? What do I want to show you? Second. Uh, let's kind of pick, maybe. Um, let's uh, give me a second. Let's pick one particular route, right? And uh, it could be something like uh, 172, 17. Do we have like 1.0 slash 25, right? So let's pick this route and try to dig deeper. So if I do show SD van, uh, sorry, show uh, OMP route, I believe. Um, and let's just pick this route and let's try to dig deeper into what this is. And this should give me the output, right? Um, okay. So here, can you see the uh, label? Do I see a label? Yeah, here. You can see the label now, right? So this is exactly what I was telling earlier. So all the OMP routes, right, which uh, uh, which vSmart kind of reflected, right? Uh, what it did was when it reflected, one thing is it changed the next stop, right? It changed the T lock to obviously the T lock of BR3 because now we want all the traffic to go through BR3 because our service or the firewall is on BR3. Second thing is it also tagged all these routes with the label of 1006, right? And we remember from our earlier discussion, we have written down here 1006 is basically corresponding to the firewall. So now what happens is whenever traffic in the data plane, right? In the data plane, when the traffic is coming, right, the packet will have this particular label 1006, right. So when BR3 looks at that packet and it looks at that label 1006, it knows that it has to redirect that packet to the firewall, right. That's how, you know, BR3 will know that, you know, it has to redirect that uh, traffic to firewall and then firewall will obviously, you know, uh, take care of the next step, right, because firewall also has connectivity 
firewall is part of VPN 10 so it has connectivity to all the nodes right so all the destination so it will be able to forward after that so that's the whole idea I mean in service chaining you have the um, you have something like a, in this case we have the vSmart right which is uh, uh, so we you define like a centralized control policy which will make sure that the t-lock changes so that you know all the traffic basically uh, or all the all the nodes will directly reach out to that site which is giving you that service in this case br3 and second thing is these labels are used right these labels are dynamically created for a particular service and those labels will now be used in the data plane right so let's do some testing so we have probably done the whole configuration part <coughs> right so we looked at the label that is good let's also look at the label from the br3 perspective we can check it out here as well i guess I'm not sure uh do we have a show command here give me a second yeah the, this this specific uh, command right so if you see now show mp services okay give me a second i'm not sure if it's recording yeah yeah so what we are doing you can see here um, it's basically the same output but I just wanted to reiterate we are basically telling this we have a service firewall on BR3 and the label for that is 1006 so you get any traffic right with the with the label of 1006 right in the data plane you take that particular traffic and give it to the firewall right and uh, we know that firewall is directly reachable from the BR3 we have already defined it earlier so that's how that's how everything you know comes together right um, now the interesting thing is I, I told you that the next stops have changed so the next stops would have changed everywhere else so like for example let me show you on br1-1 let's see what has happened on I'm not sure if this is disconnected right so I showed you to you on at uh, r1 but let me also show it to you on br1-1 what has happened on br1-1 also you can see the T logs everything has changed to BR3 right but what would have happened on BR3 right let's check that sorry not this it's that this one okay this command right let's see what has happened here you see it has not changed and that is good right so it has not changed yet the T logs have not changed they are the original T logs and this is this is really important to you know, note here because imagine if we change this right imagine if we change this particular t logs then what will happen is the traffic you know which is coming to the firewall right it will have to exit the site right at some point of time so it is you know for example let's say site one wants to talk to you know 101 is or let me just draw it here uh, hope hope it will be visible right so let me use a darker color probably we use red so let's say r1 wants to talk to site 102 right or headquarters wants to talk to 102 because of what we have done service chaining we will basically uh, the next stop for every route is br3 right it comes to br3 br3 then passes the traffic to the firewall right say this say the firewall is sitting here so firewall gets the traffic firewall will then you know obviously send it back uh, you know out right and uh, it comes to br3 and from br3 obviously it will either use the mpls or internet and go back right this is this is how the uh, flow is happening right now right so for this part of the you know uh, for, for this part of the trajectory right br3 really needs to know how to reach these destinations because if on br3 if we also change the t lock on br3 to br3 itself then the traffic will basically you know will not be able to exit the site at all right that is the reason you know initially like i said i did not i used the site numbers as 1 101 and 102 i did not use site 103 right i did not i told vsmart do everything you want to do put your control policy but then put put it in headquarters put it in uh, 101 102 but don't put it on 103 because if you do put it on 103 then you'll lose connectivity the firewall will not be able to reach back right the traffic will come till br3 but from br3 
it will not be able to reach back to any remote sites right so uh, the site which really has your service should have you know the uh, full connectivity right should have the connectivity up there so that's that's basically why we did not use that particular site right that's one point very important point to note cool moving forward so let me uh, i'm not sure how will i do a demo of this so let me think about that give me a second all right so this is a very simple test to you know actually verify that uh, our traffic is actually going via the firewall right so what i have done is on my headquarters which is this one let me go back to the give me a second right so if i go down to my headquarters pc this pc over here so i have turned on the ping on that particular pc right it is trying to ping uh, uh, the 172 17 2.1 right which is my uh, so i'm from my headquarters i'm trying to ping my site 102 so ideally the traffic should never go through firewall but you can see now because of my service chaining you know if i'm trying to uh, run the show connection command you can see that the icmp traffic is getting captured here right so this 32.40 is nothing but my headquarters pc and this is my uh, you know site 102 so you can see how uh, the traffic you know which is actually going from headquarters to 102 is actually passing through br3 going to the firewall and then going back right and you can see the ping also getting completed here right so that's something which i wanted to show you as part of this let me see if i can tell sure uh, we can discuss something more on this um, okay maybe we could talk about this right so what we have done here is pretty good but what if um, let me just reduce this a bit because i want to tackle a very interesting problem now so uh, let's go back to that earlier point right uh, where you know i was i was telling you guys about uh, uh, the issue which creeps in when you kind of um, if you enable service chaining even on the br3 right or site 103 where you actually have the service running right so let me take an example to explain this so for example for a minute let's just assume that we have your only uh, let me it's a better one i guess this is better yeah so we have uh, imagine we just have our br2 give me a second let me just get rid of this one sec okay for a minute let's assume that we just have our br2 and we have uh, uh, yeah let me just uh, just get it here yeah cool this is better so we have br2 and we have our br3 right and obviously we have the rest of the stuff where you have our internet and transport and all of that right now say the PC which is BR behind BR2, let's say we call it as PC2 and the one which is behind BR3 is PC3. And uh, also behind this uh, BR3, we have our firewall, which is used for service chaining. Now, if PC2 wants to talk to, let me use a different color, if PC2 wants to talk to PC3, what will happen? First, the request come to BR2, right? From BR2, obviously, it will use the transport, uh, whichever, either MPLS or internet, that right, you have it over here either you know any of it right mpls internet whatever is the transport it's going to use the transport and then from the transport it will come to br3 it's going to come here because you know we have changed the t lock on every every uh, we have changed the t lock on br2 right or vsmart has changed the t lock so it's going to come to br3 br3 is going to happily forward it to the firewall right firewall will inspect the traffic and then obviously it will send it back because we just have one interface in this case it's going to send it back to br3 and then the BR3 will again send it via the transport, you know, back to BR2 and B PC2 gets the traffic. Now, this is fine. This is in line with what we designed, right? We wanted all the traffic to go to firewall, get inspected and then go back. So that's perfect. No worries, right? Uh, in fact, sorry, I think I missed one point here. I missed one step if I'm not wrong. So I would say just, uh, yeah. So it would basically come down to uh, uh, BR3 and then BR3 would basically send it to PC3 because PC3 is the guy where the traffic has to go, right? So 
this works fine. So traffic which is coming from PC2 to PC3 reaches perfectly. But what if the same situation right, for the traffic which has to come from PC3 towards PC2, what would happen in that case? So in that case, what happens is the traffic first from PC3 goes to BR3. But you see on BR3, you know, we don't have any kind of redirection happening to the firewall, right? BR3 basically doesn't have the T logs on BR3 are not changed. So if PC3 wants to talk to PC2, traffic comes to BR3, BR3 will directly take the traffic and send it to, you know, BR2 and it will then reach PC2. See what happened here? We never went through the firewall, right? So whatever we did now or the design which we have done now has a disadvantage where the site number 103 will never be able to use the, this is a site 103, right? This is a site 103 where the firewall is residing. So this particular site will not be able to use the firewall, right, for its outgoing traffic, right? That's, that's where it's going to break. And uh, so we have to fix this, right? Right, so we have to fix it. Even before fixing, let me actually show you the even more adverse effects of this, right? We, we looked at this flows individually, but if you look at something like ICMP, right, the ICMP connection itself will fail, right? Let me demonstrate that. So if I'm doing the same thing, instead of doing PC2, let me do the same thing from headquarters, right? So from headquarters, let's try to talk to this BR3, which is here. Let's see if that works. So I'm on headquarters here, right? So I'll go to headquarters and I'll say ping 172.17.3.2. is nothing but uh, this nice switch which is you know behind this guy so this is the 3.2 let me show you how it looks show ip interface brief right so we oh i think i have probably not put that have i 172 17 uh, give me a second okay so in, no no issues i think this should still work we have 172 uh, 17 3.11 right so let's see if this works 3.11 yeah you see the ping is working so from the headquarters I'm able to ping the switch which is behind here right why why it worked because the traffic first came from um, where is that yeah from headquarters this particular PC the traffic uh, went to one of the transport, right? Then it immediately went to BR3. Then it went to the uh, firewall, right? Firewall basically sent it to the switch, right? And then switch, obviously in the return path, you know, it went, it obviously did not go to the firewall again because, you know, from switch, it directly went to BR3, then to the transport and back to the PC. But since the ICMP echo was sent from here, the reply also came to the PC. So that's why the connection succeeded. But if I do the same thing from switch, right, it will not work. So if I go back to my um, switch here and I do the same thing in the reverse direction, you see 172.16.32.40. This is my PC. Right, see, this won't work. Why this won't work is because when the ICMP echo is going, right, it will use which path? When the ICMP echo is going, it will not use the firewall. It will go directly. It will go to BR3. It will go to the transport and then it will reach the PC. But when the ICMP reply is coming, right, from when it is coming inside my branch, it will go come by the transport. It will come to BR3. From BR3, it will come to my firewall, right? So, and then, you know, firewall will drop the traffic because firewall is just receiving ICMP reply, but it doesn't have ICMP echo. Right, and firewalls are stateful, right? So firewall will allow a connection only if it has the corresponding state entries, right? So firewall will drop the traffic. So that's why you will see, see here, it did not succeed. It should, it would be a little strange for you when you look at it from the first go because you see here in the opposite direction the ping is working. See here from, uh, from the PC I'm able to ping my uh, switch, but from switch to PC it doesn't work because the traffic is taking two different paths or you know when it is when it is going out it is obviously going directly from br3 uh, not going via the firewall but when the traffic is coming inside it is going to the firewall and that it's getting dropped 
Now there is a fix, right? There is a quick fix for this. Obviously, the um, <clears throat> so the fix here is we will have to create a very quick uh, local data policy here, right? So we'll have to create a local data policy saying that you know any traffic which is coming in obviously from this particular um, you know VLAN 10, right, into the uh, BR3, it has to be redirected to the ASA, right? Currently, it is not getting redirected. Everything is going out. So we are basically going to force it to go get into the ASA. So that's what we are going to do now, right? Let's check if you already have some kind of an ACL on BR3. Let's check that. So let's go to BR3 here. So show policy um, access list associations. Okay, so we have something called ACL from VLAN 10 over here. So we can reuse that. I'm happy with that. So let's go back to our policy here. Give it a second. All right, so he's back. So what I'll do is I'll go down to my policies here. So under policies, uh, let's go to, uh, it's going to be a local data policy. Let's go to access control list. Let's find that this is the one which we are interested with. So let's go and edit this guy. It's the ACL from VLAN 10, right? So that's the ACL which we are interested with. That seems to be nothing. Let's add something here. Let's add a sequence rule. And when you're adding a sequence rule, uh, we'll have to, because this ACR I think is going to be applied on multiple devices. So let's make it more specific. Let's select the source data prefix. And uh, okay, it's stuck, give me a second. Yeah, there you go, source data prefix. So I'll have to explicitly define here because I have not done that before. So I'll do 172. Dot seventeen dot three dot zero slash twenty four I believe or twenty five twenty five okay so this is the uh, VLAN ten right the VLAN ten for which we want to apply this policy uh, the VLAN ten on site uh, one zero three or behind BR three so one seventy two seventeen three dot zero slash twenty five and what is the action where is the action uh, drag and drop. Uh, to rearrange rules okay I think it's stuck or let's go up okay here so we have action so in action what we'll do is we will obviously have to accept so this is enabled the next stop you know this is where we are gonna say hey whatever traffic you get here send it to the firewall which is 172 17.30.4 uh, that is my firewall All right so we're basically gonna send it to that guy uh, let's also get, uh, let's also probably put in some kind of a counter if you want, just to see, you know, if the redirection is happening or something like that, right? So let's put a redirection firewall as a counter, which is pretty cool. Let's save this. Okay, so I don't want protocol, sorry. Yeah, let's save this. And uh, okay, action, hope I put action, right? Action is enabled, yeah. So let's save this. And uh, in the default, obviously, it's enabled, so that's cool. The policy will be pushed to all active devices, that's okay. Once we do this, the it's also going to BR1-2, interesting. Okay, wait, uh, is it going to the device which I want? Hope it's going to the device. Yeah, it's going to, uh, it's going to BR three. That's what I want. Yeah, so that's cool. Anyway, so let's wait for that to happen. So once this succeeds, we should be able to do the same ping which did not work earlier, right? From here, right? This one did not work, right? So now once I fix that. We should be able to do this ping because now the traffic would basically follow the same path, right? So it will even if I'm pinging from switch two to the PC, what we are doing is we are making the traffic first go to the firewall, right? And from firewall it will then come back and go to BR three and then go to headquarters. So you know the the connection will be open or the state 
entry will be created on the firewall right the icmp uh, echo uh, state will be created and that's uh, that's very good because when the icmp reply comes from the other side you know it will allow it to pass through right so let's see is the thing completed yeah it's completed so now let's check if this works yep there you go we just now proved it right see now it is pinging earlier it was not able to reach but now it is working because we have created that right so hope uh, this was this is basically what i wanted to show in this video right so uh, it was a very extensive video i believe uh, but pretty interesting one right we now to quickly recap what we did was we kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> introduced the concept of you know service chaining service chaining is nothing but using one using the service available at one particular site you know so sharing it with all the other sites right um, and you know sd1 allows you to do it like with few clicks creating bunch of policies and so on right just to summarize what we did here give me a second right just to summarize what we did the first step is we went and cr uh, created a new firewall right we added it to a new subnet which was our 172.17.30.0 slash 24 subnet right and uh, so we, we wanted to keep it separate so we created a new vlan which is vlan 30 and we added that vlan to my br3 or basically we created a sub interface on the br3 and we made sure that uh, you know the default gateway of this new firewall was the br3 basically both should be able to reach each other and we also went and tampered the vpn the earlier vpn 10 which was there it was not accommodating this new vlan so we created a new vpn right and we accommodated this uh, vlan right uh, on that particular vpn so once we did that then you know all the service routes right let's start using the word service routes all the routes service routes corresponding to this firewall started going to this vsmart and uh, once we were happy with that we went and created policies on the vsmart telling vsmart how to deal with these routes right so we we basically told vsmart to change the t lock right of all the routes of all the omp routes for v, vpn 10 so every time now r1 was you know um, uh, learning any routes omp routes for any vpn 10 on any of the sites the default or the next hop was becoming br3 so now anytime um, B, uh, you know br1 wants to talk to i mean sorry anytime site 1 wants to talk to any other site it has to go through br3 and on br3 obviously we had uh, uh, we have the service defined so uh, it was also using this very unique tag right so this vsmart is doing a very intelligent job here it is taking all the omp routes it is changing the t lock and the second thing is it is tagging each of these routes with the um, you know with the with the label associated with the service which we have defined so as a result now whenever the traffic um, uh, let's say has to go from site 1 to say site 101 the traffic first goes to br3 br3 looks at the label present in the packet right it's going to have the label in our case i think it was 1006 so it looks at the label and uh, because this label is present as part of the omp route right so uh, so it look at the label and once it looks up the label it will decide which service it has to offer in this case the firewall so it will forward it to firewall firewall will then inspect the traffic and then you know in our case we just put permit any any but you can now go and put amazing rules on firewall right or you can use something like ips or ideas or any kind of you know uh, service over here and uh, once we uh, once the traffic from the firewall once it reaches the firewall firewall can then route the traffic out to the actual destination because even firewall is part of the same vpn right so we kind of verified as well where we kind of uh, tried to ping from this particular pc to i think uh, site 102 and we saw that the traffic was going to the firewall then we found that in this design there was a small error because in this design my site 103 was not able to use the whole service chaining feature right the traffic going out of site 103 was not going via the firewall so we tinkered a bit by adding a small localized data policy where any traffic originating from site 103 had to now go through the firewall we forced it to go through the firewall right and uh, we were able to now you know ping from switch to the pc i hope uh, that was useful uh, thanks a lot guys for watching and uh, keep watching stvan and uh, We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.